Yes guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. Hope you guys are all having a great day. And Newcastle United got off to a good start in 2023 with a nil-nil draw against Arsenal down at the Emirates Stadium. We knew it was going to be a tough game. Uh, they are a very good side. They are top of the league for a reason. And had you offered me a draw before the game started, you know, I would have taken it. Uh, but we played well. Uh, there was phases in the game where we were under pressure. But I think we had a few chances in there as well. Joe Linton at the back post. If he could have just headed that in. Uh, Callum Wilson had the ball whizzed past him. With you, you know, you put your house on Callum Wilson scoring that one. Uh, but generally speaking, we defended very, very well. Um, Sven Botman at the back, the Rolls Royce, uh, Pope made a couple of key saves as well. And look, for me, the ref had a nightmare, uh, giving out yellow cards for anything, and then, in my opinion, not giving second yellow cards to a couple of Arsenal players. Look, they'll look at us and say, well, what about Dan Byrne pulling on Gabriel's top in the box as well? But it doesn't matter. Because uh, we got the point, I think it was a good point. You know, we, I was going to say, have had a terrible record down at the Emirates Stadium. So it was a good point and we move on to Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday when we play in the third round of the FA Cup down at the Hillsborough Stadium. A six o'clock kickoff on Saturday and it's on BBC. And I will have a full preview for that game on the channel. So if you're not subscribed... Be sure to do so. Uh, we're hoping to see Isaac return. I'll be doing all the usual stuff, including all of the lineups ahead of that game. And it'll be interesting to see how Newcastle do line up for this Sheffield Wednesday game. As we saw against Arsenal, the likes of Willock pretty much um, crawling off the pitch. Uh, we put in such a huge effort in that game. I think he had cramp. I think it was players who wanted to come off but we couldn't take them off uh, because generally speaking and you know going into this January window I'm hoping to see some movement I think we will make some deals and get some players over the line this window but I almost felt a little bit like that Arsenal game and now having a cup game so quick after and then we play Leicester on the Tuesday Eddie Howe generally does not rotate the side that often. Uh, and it's because he wants to play, play his best players. Um, Eddie Howe has spoken passionately on his hope to try and bring cup success to Newcastle, or at the very least, a cup run. I mean, the fact that we're in the quarter-final of the Carabao Cup on Tuesday is always already great after, you know, how poor we've been in cups over the last few years. But to try and play, you know, the same 11 players you know, three times in a week is a lot to ask, uh, especially for, you know, some of the older players. You know, look at Dan Byrne playing left back. I mean, he's putting in a real shift. And to do that three times in a week is a lot. Then you think target's injured at the minute, so he can't come in and play on Saturday. So that, does that mean it's Dan Byrne again? Is he going to... We're going to see Richie or Dummett for the first time this season. We're not seeing Lewis either. So is there some rotating that can be done there? Or is this why we need to get into this January window and try and bring in some players to help? I've been quite of the opinion this January that if we bring players in, it's either young, upcoming players who may not be ready right now, but can become great players. You look at Fresneda, uh, the young right back that we have been scouting. Quite a, a bit of news on him. It's understood that he's actually... Um, said goodbye to his teammates. Uh, and that's reported by Sky Sports. It's got the news on the telly in the background there. It's it's reported that he's already said goodbye and they believe it is Newcastle United where he is on his way. Now look, Trippier, first name on the team sheet, or one of the first na names on the team sheet, but with Crafty out, Mankiw doesn't get a game. Who's, who's covering for Trippier if he needs a break? Like, I don't want to see Trippier replaced... But we need to have people in place to rotate, recover, so that players can be at their best 
for every game. Now, in fairness with Fresneda, because he's quite a young lad, it's possibly thought that he might even go out on loan before coming to Newcastle. I mean, the way it stands right now, I think he could probably come in and do a job, but then also you want to give him first-team football. Um, but this is why I think players like Scott McTominay are entering uh, the conversation. Not because he's going to come in as a world-class player and suddenly bump us to the next level, but because against Arsenal, we played Longstaff, Bruno, Willock. And then we played Joe Litton on the left wing. After them, who have we got next? Shelby's injured. Anderson. Even though really I would like to see him play a more wide role, but let's throw Anderson in there as well. Now all of a sudden, in the cup game on Saturday, okay, Anderson's in. Then you go back to, well, we're going to have to play Bruno again, we're going to have to play Joe Linton again. There is not much there in terms of depth. I think Shelby getting injured is tough for us. I think it was almost going to be like a new signing going into the second half of the season where things are getting more hectic, trying to make up for the games that got missed for the World Cup. Players do get injured, players do get fatigued, and now to not have Shelby come in and be available is tough. Now, it's understood or reported that um, there are admirers in the Newcastle camp of Scott McTominay. Now, don't get me wrong. I do not believe that Amanda and Murdad are sat down having a, having a cup of tea talking about how much they'd love for Scott McTominay to join the club. I'm really not sure who these admirers are, but I think one of the things that Eddie Howe wants and one of the things that is being reported is he wants players who are used to the Premier League. Um, I know I've spoken about some of the younger players. I know I spoke about um, uh, Fresneda already. Um, obviously, young, Spanish could probably come in and do a little job for us. But generally speaking, he's talking about players who can come in and are adjusted to the league. Now, if I'm totally honest, Scott McTominay is not where I'm turning my attention. I am keeping my attention on the players who we know will come in and immediately add to what we want to try and do here. You're talking about James Madison. He's someone who would do that. Tillemans is a man who's linked as well. It's understood that with Dubravka coming back, the, he actually asked to come back. Uh, it, it was said that Newcastle recalled him. Uh, what's coming out is that Dubravka apparently requested his return. Is that because it wasn't going to plan? He wasn't getting any football? Does he really want to try and fight for his place? Or has he seen the January window as an option to come back and try and go out again? Because he had his chance to fight with Pope once before, and he turned it down. I think Dubravka's looked and gone, actually, uh, is this my chance to maybe go back and use the January window as a chance to make my move and go out somewhere different? Uh, it just so happens uh, that Leicester, and it's now being reported that Leicester do indeed have interest in uh, Dubravka. I really hope we can take that to our advantage and try and maybe not only move him on, but use him as part of a bargain. Because uh, Leicester don't want to, Leicester don't want to sell us Madison. They they are not having a great season. They want to keep the best players. I don't think they'd want to lose money on Tillemans. I think if they can get some money for him, they would. Potentially, Dubravka could be worth more to them in the long run, or at least, sorry, in the short term than Madison would be, because at least he'd keep the ball out the back of the net. Obviously, I've already spoken about the young Argentinian player Alan Varela. Uh, it's thought that Newcastle may have placed the first bid of the window on him for around 15, 16 million. Um, again, he's a young guy, just 21 years old, and I do not think would come in and necessarily take over from Bruno and Joe Linton but what he would do is add a player who can p play in that position um, the McTominay one is the one that's kind of running around uh, the whispers of Newcastle social media and media in general at the moment so you'll have to let me know your thoughts on him we were linked with him back in the summer uh, it's thought that Manchester United have said uh, no sale uh, they don't want to let him go which also surprises me it if we were somehow able to work out a loan deal for Scott McTominay, or a couple of million, look, 
he'll add to the numbers. He can come in, he can play in these games when players need a break. He will add a little bit of depth, but I don't think he's the kind of player who should be going out and blowing... I was going to say blowing the bank. I don't think that's possible with Scott McTominay. You know where I'm going with that one. Uh, so let me know your thoughts on that one down below. How do you feel a little bit in terms of kind of moving at this second half of this season? Because I, I don't know if my shift of thought has changed a little bit on this January window because I was quite of the opinion it's either young players or a player who will take us to the next level. But then you do think about the the depth that we had, even with Crafty, even with Shelby, there was a little bit there. And now we're targeting Judge. Are we going to try and reintroduce someone like Richie to play more often? Because if we're not, there's a lot of players there who aren't seeing the time of day. Should we be moving them out now? Don't even wait for the summer. Do it now. Try and bring players in who can bulk now. Just we found ourselves in a very good position in the league right now. And to not take advantage of a window when we could use a little bit more star quality, when we could use a little bit more in terms of depth, should we, should we be taking it? Or is taking players who aren't good enough a step back? And what we should actually do is take our time and wait for the summer and get the youngsters in and train them up. And it doesn't all have to be done overnight. Let me know your thoughts on that one down below. I think it's interesting. I think uh, we will definitely see more and more coming from this January window. And what or who comes in the door, we will have to wait and see. Or who goes out the door as well is also going to be a very interesting one. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're still watching 12 minutes later, be sure to hit that big red button. Subscribe. It's free. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, but what I will do is notify you guys when I post a video. Loads of content coming in the next few weeks with loads of games. And I've no doubt a few more transfer links as well. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.